Welcome to the 12 Days of Christmas, and in this episode, we are going to be talking about the team that finished in 7th place, which is Toro Rosso. Now, they rolled up to the 2016 Formula 1 season with two drivers that they retained from 2015, and that was Dutch driver Max Verstappen and Spanish driver Carlos Sainz Jr. Now, they are very in a prestige league uh, as they entered the 2016 season because they weren't rookies anymore. They had really stamped their authority in Formula 1 and with the team, and they also, as they know, have uh, dads who have been in Formula the one before obviously Max had Jos and Carlos had Carlos so they both headed into 2016 you know wanting to make a big stand in Formula 1 they did they're not rookies anymore as I've just said nothing Max Verstappen doing some good driving with Tor Rosso remember he did that pass uh, in 2015 at spa Sean at uh, the uh, at the final corner going into the bus stop chicane which is Blanchimon obviously an amazing overtake for uh, a man that just turned 18 years old at that time anyway so we rolled into yeah. Australia and that is even where the um, the action actually happened Happens. Uh, so we have uh, we have car number 33, which is Max Verstappen, and car number 55, Carlos Sainz. Uh, now Max Verstappen finishes in 10th place, Carlos finishes in 9th place. So they were both in the points, obviously very, very good. But then we probably had the first actual in-season team battle at the Australian Grand Prix because um, the uh, two Toro Rossos were going at it. Uh, they were both battling each other, and obviously they were battling other drivers in the race. Obviously they were battling Jolly and Palmer in the Renault and things like that to get through, and also for Team Supremacy. Um, Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen were battling for many, many, many laps, and obviously uh, Carlos Sainz, yeah, was was going against Max Verstappen and apparently hit him, which obviously he got into the radio and was being very vocal. Obviously, there was a lot of things going around saying is Max Verstappen becoming like the next Sebastian Vettel on the radio. You know, it's all all you know all talk yeah. but no you know action or anything like that. We all we did know, but obviously it was a great drive by them. They were both in the points, and obviously one of very few teams to actually get in the points. And so far, obviously they were the only team from the teams that we've discussed uh, in in the previous days. Anyways. So they headed into the second round, uh, which was in Bahrain, and again Max Verstappen doing an amazing race in sixth place. Again, he really liked this, certainly did really, really well here in 2015. Carlos Sainz, on the other hand, had to face a retirement. They headed into the third race, which is the Shanghai Circuit um, in China. Again, it's a ninth, eighth place for Max Verstappen and a ninth place for Carlos Sainz. So really, really well. They were back in the points, and then the next round and in Russia was a retirement for Max Verstappen and a 12th place just outside the points for Carlos Sainz. So unfortunately, no points for them. But here is the interesting part, okay? Now, as you know, obviously, we're going to be discussing the other teams. Don't worry, down the line. But obviously, Red Bull were under, you know, should they keep Daniel Kvyat as the driver? Anyway, we are not discussing Red Bull, so I'm just going to tell you now that they decided to get rid of Max Verstappen. Sorry, they decided to get rid of Daniel Kvyat and bring in <laughs> Max Verstappen. Now, again, we made that trade in places video, which, to be honest, would actually kind of... Is is what obviously what obviously we're going to be discussing like when when we give our opinions on should Max have been brought in, uh, what obviously to Red Bull, but Daniel is now back obviously like he was in 2014. So now Max is up the road, you know. By Max, we're going to leave him for now for a good few days now, and we're going to focus on Max and um, sorry Daniel and Carlos. So obviously, yeah. car number 26 yeah. is back uh, in Formula One. So headed into the Spanish Grand Prix, the race. Now, obviously, it was very depressing for Daniel Kvyat because, as I say, he lost his seat. And obviously, Max Verstappen might have done something special in that race, but we'll get into that when we discuss Red Bull racing, obviously. But again, he finished in the points, so it was great from him. Obviously, he finished in 10th place. Carlos Sainz, obviously, better in himself, uh, stamping his foot down and saying, I am the leader. He, you might have been at Toro Rosso beforehand and got promoted, but now that you're back, I'm, st I'm now the big cheese. Obviously, he finished in 6th place. The next round at the Monaco yeah. Grand Prix, Daniel Kvyat had a retirement. Carlos finished in 8th. Then the next round at the Canadian Grand Prix, uh, Daniel Kvyat just finished outside of the points in 12th place and Carlos in 9th. It was a double retirement at the Baku Street Circus uh, in Azerbaijan, and then at the uh, home with well, the home race of Red Bull, and again uh, for a race that uh, Tor Russell was supposed to do very well at, obviously the Red Bull Ring in Austria. It came a retirement for Daniel Fiat and an eighth place for Carlos Sainz. The next round, which uh, which was the British Grand Prix, saw a double points finish again. So we're back now on a good streak for the Tor Russell drivers. Daniel Fiat obviously filling the last points position, obviously the one point for tenth place, and then Carlos. Carlos Sainz made it an 8th place. He actually did three 8th places in a row. Obviously, that's what he did in Hungary. Daniel Kvyat 
unfortunately did a 16th position. And then the last round of the first half of the season, obviously it was a 14th place for Carlos Sainz, getting the one position better than Daniel Kvyat, who finished in 15th. Now, obviously Toro Rosso had a very, very, very strange season. It had a tail of three drivers. But it's not so much like Manor that have, you know, had one drive for one part of the season and then it's kind of like, a, you know, faded away and then now we're in with a second driver. It has been, yeah. you know, almost like a harsh kicking out. And obviously it is going to be very strange to the, to the trade and play. It's going to be very similar to the trade and places, obviously. Um... Now, as I say, JT, we're going to leave Max Verstappen alone. Obviously, we're going to talk about him when we do the Red Bull team review in the next few days. But obviously, Daniel Fiat yeah. coming to uh, back to Tor Russell, it was a very strange move. Obviously, that was this was a man who you know had been at had been at Tor Russell beforehand. And as I say, he was back. Yeah. Um, maybe it wasn't the best results that he wanted. Obviously, two points finishes only in 10th place. Obviously, so scoring two points uh, since he returned to Tor Russell. But amazing for Carlos Sainz. I mean, uh, just to say that obviously Max Verstappen left. In Spain, uh, Carlos Sainz from Spain to Hungary, taking out the European Grand Prix, scored in every single round, which obviously is absolutely unbelievable from them. So let me give yeah. my result, my, the half-term report in the view of me, obviously a Red Bull fan. It was great to see Daniel Fiat in. Obviously, as we discussed in a good few episodes ago, I even backed Daniel Fiat to be my driver. Thankfully, I didn't buy a cap that said 26 on it, because if I was, I'd be, I'd be trying <laughs> oh, to find the receipt. Um <laughs> but um, yeah, obviously that you know yeah. it, I backed him to be a really really good driver. Obviously now that Max Verstappen's come in, or when he did come in, I was still backing him. Obviously yeah. he did good things in Spain as well and so forth. And he was yeah. going to be the next driver to pair Daniel Kvy uh, to D Daniel Ricciardo. So obviously that was going to be good. But Daniel Kvyat, um, he did okay. I mean, obviously it was very heartbreaking for him what had happened. Obviously in the Spanish Grand Prix uh, press conference, I mean he couldn't even speak. He was very, very sad. He got that phone call when he was watching Game of Thrones, and I mean we almost cried for him. It was very upsetting. Anyway, yeah. so let's get on to the results. Obviously, first result that we're going to give is Max Verstappen at Toro Rosso. Now that is very strange because it feels like he wasn't even at Toro Rosso for you know last year or the or, or the yeah. most recent year that we've had in Formula One, but he was now he did a good race obviously as I say he scored points um, in three out of the four rounds that he was there obviously the most crucial was Russia because that was where it was getting judged but also, unfortunately he had to retire so I'm going to give Mac Verdammit a very good C and obviously in Australia it was probably about an A star but obviously you know a few races just normal under the belt and obviously Russia didn't really help but really good from Max a C and again the car I would say it's a D coming on a C so obviously very strong same for Carlos Sainz but his effort, I'm going to give, again, a C. So I'm going to say C's all around. You know, it's almost like Tom Russell were the team to watch. An absolutely unbelievable team. I mean, this was amazing for the start of the season. Now Max is gone. Uh, Daniel, let's get him back in. Obviously, again, the car, you know, again, the same like Carlos Sainz. But he's just not, a bit like Esteban Gutierrez and Roman Grosjean. He's just not finding, you know, the pace that his teammate is. So, again, I'm going to say for, car, uh, for Daniel, the car, probably about a D. And his effort in Formula 1, I mean, obviously, yeah. it was knocked down to a, you know, a Z. But obviously he's got it back to, uh, I'm going to say, let's say a D. So let's give Daniel Kvyat a D overall for the first half of the season. As he just, just taking into account, his morale will be very low. And again, Carlos, I'm going to give him a strong C, close, very close to a B. Now, JT, obviously, Tor Russell had a very, 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 very strange uh, first half to the season. It come down in the second half, which obviously you'll get annoying in a bit. But this first time, yep. a tale of three drivers and I mean you couldn't get more crazy you, you couldn't write a more crazy script than, than Tor Russell's first half of the season could you? You couldn't actually it was so unpredictable like I remember when the rumours were going about that Daniel Kivar could you know could be getting kicked out of Red Bull and everything like something replacing him it was like oh come on guys that's just ridiculous and then when it did happen it was like wow it was a very very controversial one of the most talked about topics uh, of the 2016 Formula 1 season it was really it was just bizarre how everything just unfolded um, but like I said very very controversial as well a lot of people started to give Toro Rosso a little bit of hate as well as, well as Red Bull to be actually towards the Red Bull family because they were like well how can you do this to your drivers you've signed them and then you just sacked them really and, well more than your keyboard as well and it's like you've replaced them with Max Verstappen why not Carlos Sainz you know and, you know so why why didn't I really like choose between them? You know what I mean. So I I don't know I don't know much about that. But any but anyways, it was a very very controversial moment, um, and probably go down one of the most talked about topics in Formula One history somewhere down the line. So we're gonna go into the second part of the season with Toro Rosso, where you know it kind of didn't go as well as the first half of the season. Rocked up in Belgium, uh, Danny Kivas, uh, for uh, P14, and uh, Carlos Sainz a uh, retirement, not the start you want to go. 
after a summer break. Normally with summer breaks, you just want to go into it, refresh yourself, go into the, into the next part of the season and you know try and revive yourself for any, any trouble you had at the first half. You need to go in there for the, you know, have a better second half and if you've had a good first half, then you need to go in there and have a, a, basically a kind of a similar or even a better second half. So that was Belgium coming. At the Italian Grand Prix, Danny Kivat had a retirement. Uh, Carl Sainz finished in 15th. Uh, at the uh, Singapore Grand Prix, uh, Finally scored some points for uh, Danny Kivat. His first Hall of Points in a long, long time. Uh, obviously going through some very traumatic stages uh, in his career with Toro Rosso because he was going about psycho psychological problems and stuff like that, you know, mental problems and everything. People were getting a little bit concerned at this stage. And there was a bit of rumours that he couldn't be, he could actually be kicked out, obviously, at Toro Rosso, which obviously that will be even worse for him, judged by of the season he's already had. Uh, Carlos Sainz uh, for in P14 at Singapore. Jump on to the, to the Malaysian Grand Prix. P14 for Daniel Kiva. P11, worst position in Formula 1, for Carlos Sainz. At the Japanese Grand Prix, P13 for uh, Daniel Kiva. P17 for uh, Carlos Sainz. Uh, at the United States Grand Prix, P11, again, for uh, Daniel Kiva. P6, good haul of points there for Carlos Sainz. Uh, obviously, closing the gap to McLaren, they were the, the, they were pretty much those two were in a battle of their own. So they want to get as many points as they could. Um, so obviously, that was a very very good result. Bad result for me. Good result for them. Obviously, that that is that is, that is another story. Uh, at the Mexican Grand Prix, Danny came out P18, uh, Carlos Sainz P16. But then at the Brazilian Grand Prix, P6 again for Carlos Sainz. Brilliant haul of points there, but not good enough. Uh, not good enough, as I will go on probably tomorrow. Uh, P13 for uh, Daniel Kivat as well, and retirement for both cars at the end of the season. So, judging by that, from two halves, uh, guys, the first half was where Toro Rosso scored a lot of their points. They had a very good start. A lot of people were saying, you know, this car is good. I remember in pre season, uh, Max Verstappen was saying that this is the best car I've worked with in Formula One. Um, or, or, or you know, so far in a long, long time, and even uh, some of the head guys at Toro Rosso who've been there since day one have said this is going to be a very good car. That car, the pace showed at the first half, but when they came into the second half of the season, it was some of that, them horses out of that car sort of ran away and you know left, and it was like, well, what's going on here, guys? So you know, it was very, very, bad, very, very unlucky. But once uh, Daniel Kivat was confirmed as a driver for, for the 2017 season with um, Toro Rosso. That's when he, he calmed down. He looked a bit more happier. It was, you know, it was good to see. And he obviously he ended the season on a bike, didn't he? Because he didn't get the scooter when his car retired. He got a bike back to the paddock. So started the season in a Red Bull. Finished the season on a bike. So that is the, that was that was Daniel Kivat's season review, guys. Thank you very much, Monikin. Um, so as a, as an overall, I'm going to judge this by I'm not I'm not going to talk about Max Verstappen because there's only about four races. So you know you can't really see. Like, you can't really see it throughout obviously a season perspective from Toro Rosso that was, that would be on the Red Bull thing so for Daniel Kivat I'd probably say an effort I'd probably give him a D because of the stuff he, the trauma he had to go through because obviously getting criticism from the fans and everything obviously from, from the team you know it, it, was, it wasn't good it, it, was, it was bad for, for Daniel Kivat uh, effort wise uh, probably, probably same again it was a D when, when, he, when he came back you know, it was a bit of a struggle. As I said, psychological problems as well. It wasn't. It wasn't doing any the world of any good. So he, he he delivered. You know, he finished races, which is what which is what he needed. So obviously to prove, guys. You know, come on, guys. And this is. I'm not. I'm not gonna let this distract me. You know, I'm I'm here to race, and let's. I'm I'm, I'm gonna prove that I still have what it takes to be in Formula One. Carlos Sainz, on the other hand, now he now he got a lot of Toro Rosso's points, especially at the first half. So I'm gonna say an effort is C performance probably see it probably see again very good season of Carlos Sainz unfortunately he didn't get looked at, at Red Bull the chose Max Verstappen quite quickly a lot again a lot of people said you know why you know Carlos Sainz has got a big future ahead of him uh, it won't be a Toro Rosso where he will make a name for himself he's got to go further afield maybe it will Red Bull one day should Ricardo of Verstappen leave I, I can't see that happen anytime soon so Carlos Sainz will probably need you know try to make a move ASAP because I think 20, 2017 Will be his third season with the team. Toroso on a whole, though, I would say effort. I'll probably give him a D performance. I'll probably give him a C on performance because, um, you know, I mean, well, then I think, well, C minus. Let's say like, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say C minus because I was expecting Toroso to be higher where they were. I was expecting to be. I was expecting them to be ahead of McLaren, challenging uh, Williams and Force India being you know, being in that bunch because they have had a good few years. Uh, 2014 wasn't as good. 2015 was all right. So I mean, I, I, I was expecting a better season from 2016. Uh, however, that wasn't the case. 
But I mean, overall, from a team like Toro Rosso, it still was an average season. That's why I'm giving them a C minus. Could have been a D, but I'm 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 too kind. So I'm going to give them a C, a C minus LC. So that is my uh, review of Toro Rosso for the season. Um, obviously, Toro Rosso. Um, you know, I say a very, 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 very strange season from them. They had three drivers in so far. Now, obviously, um, you know, for, for, for the for the grades that I would give Toro Rosso, obviously, as I say, I mean, obviously, three drivers all in the Red Bull program. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm obviously very, very touched. Obviously, Daniel Kvyat, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm, you know, I really wanted him after to stay well. I wanted him to stay at. He, to be honest, he could have stayed at Red Bull. I, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, obviously, we will talk about Max Verstappen when we get to the Red Bull thing. And obviously, in the trade places before, obviously, Max Verstappen. And one in uh, Spain. Me and JT obviously did say, you know, that Daniel, that we don't understand the move. I mean, yes, obviously Max Verstappen has talk. Obviously, yes, he had his dad. But at the end of the day, yeah. why did Max? Why was Max like put ahead of Daniel? That's what we didn't get, and that's what I didn't get. And I've got to say, I mean, obviously now, you know. But the thing is, I mean, Spain. Nobody knew that was going to happen. So if anything, if you turn around and go, I knew that. I knew that was going to happen. That's why I did it. You know, they didn't at all. Yeah. They didn't know that. The only person that knew that was like Max's conscience or Max's, you know, psyche, if you get what I mean. But um, you know, that that's the thing that we'll never understand. So obviously, Max, uh, Daniel Fiat, though, it's a shame that he got it's a shame that he got moved down back to Toro Rosso. But it's good that he stayed with the team. Obviously, yeah, really, really good. From then, obviously, yeah, yeah, keeping his seat. So obviously, Pierre Gasly, he might be really annoyed. Obviously, GP2 World Championship, very well done to him. But um, you know, obviously, yeah. at the end of the day, it's good that Daniel Fiat is staying in for his reputation, Red Bull reputation, for everything. And he is a really, really good driver. I mean, you know, you can say that, guys, because obviously, yeah. I, I believe he should have stayed at Red Bull. He deserved that in 2015. And he deserved that in 2016. Max coming in was very strange, but obviously now it makes sense. But at the end of the day, though, it's like it's almost like if you give Daniel Fiat that car that you gave Max, there's no reason he couldn't do that. You know what I mean? And he did. Obviously, you know, Daniel Fiat obviously did with Red Bull. Obviously, he came third position in China. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'll go into that more in the Red Bull um, review in the next few days. Yep, so that is obviously Tor Russell. Thank you very much for watching. Um, tomorrow, we are going to be doing the team from Walken in sixth place, and that is obviously McLaren yeah. Honda with Jensen Button and Fernando Alonso. Or what Jensen going to do in his final season at the team, and obviously, can they achieve anything? Because they have been, as I say, on they have left 2015, which is their worst season since 1984 in the sport of Formula One, and obviously, just they've never got heads screwed on since the departure of Lewis Hamilton in 2012. Anyway, we'll get into that tomorrow, so obviously, we hope we catch you for that. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this episode, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Hello, guys.